Okay, hello everybody. Thank you for coming today. This is the Code Warriors event coach training for 2024. Um, here, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so here's what we're going to be covering today. Uh, I'm going to give you the brief introduction to myself. Um, take a look at the event this year, um, wh exactly what your students will be doing, as well as we're able to tell you beforehand. Um, make note of a couple different rule changes from 2023. And then I understand that a lot of people are complete beginners to Python or to coding in general. So I have some resources for you that are also on the website, but I'll go over them here. Um, give you some general test take, taking tips that you can pass on to your students. And then if you have any particular questions to ask me, which I'm sure there will be several, um, I will do my best to answer them. So um, this is me. My name is Adam. I'm not actually that hard to find, but um, for the sake of this, all questions are supposed to go through the, the website, the form there, so that it's fair for everybody. Any answers I give can be posted to the site and shared with everybody. So that's why I don't share my last name here. Um, I have already had a couple people attempt to reach out to me directly, and I told them as much. It's like, hey, really supposed to keep this for everybody? And uh, I haven't heard anything on the form from them, so I guess they didn't want to. I don't know. Um, I am the event supervisor here. Uh, this is going to be my fourth year with Science Olympiad. Looking back, um, in the first year, I inherited it from the previous people. We were actually in JavaScript back then, and I looked at it and said we need an overhaul. And then last year, I enlisted one of my students, because I teach programming and game design, um, one of my top students, I, I enlisted to help me out with the interactive uh, challenge prog uh, program that is a portion of the test now. So we'll take a look at that a bit later on, talk about it a bit. Um, but uh, that was actually created in conjunction with one of my students. Um, I also teach AP Computer Science. So my hope is that uh, some of your students w might one day um, take APCS because this is a really good introduction to computer science. And, um, and yeah, and I have a bunch of side interests. Uh, I act out in Marine City. Primarily, I referee basketball, I play card games and, and design games and that sort of thing. So that's me. Um, the uh, event format. Okay, so um, teams of one or two. I recommend two, especially the way that the event is set up, but we let, we let teams go with one. I know in some of the practice events we've had alternates and they've they've sent three in, but uh, at the actual events there will only be one or two. I'm not sure if we're doing that this year. Um, I, I've let John address that as far as the rules go, but it'll be one or two um, in the event itself. Uh, they can have one pre-written page of notes. They can put whatever they like on there. Um, no restrictions. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, it'll be in person, 30 minutes, proctored by me. Um, there are two sections this year. We have one section of multiple choice questions, so straightforward um, things about Python, about coding concepts, about variables, about anything that is covered in the scope um, in the document on the website. And then the second portion is the interactive program I alluded to earlier, which is for students to get their hands on. This covers different uh, programming concepts. Um, this is a day of event. We've designed this thing to be a low floor, high ceiling. And for those who aren't teachers, um, the uh, idea with that is every student will be able to uh, interact with this program and get some points. Um, very few students will be able to get very, uh, will, will be able to get full points on this thing. Um, and I was really happy with how it came out last year. Every team was able to, to get it. They found it really intriguing. Um, but uh, we have that topic list of everything that's covered in both of these things in the official rules document. Um, yeah, so that's the story there. 50-50 point split. What we're looking at right now, um, and I'm, I'm springing this on John, but um, having gone over it, we're looking at upping the number of multiple choice questions. And I guess this gets into a rule change from, from last year. Because we only have two sections instead of three, um, right now we're looking at uh, 40 multiple choice questions and... 40 points possible on the interactive program because that's the way it is uh, set to go. So we're looking at 40 and 40 just to give you an idea of timing there um, with those being considered easy, medium, and hard questions. A mix of those will balance it as well as we're able or each question is one point. Um, Good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, rule changes. As I said, we only have two sections on the test this year as opposed to three. For the last three years, I've done a hands-on programming 
section, they've used an online compiler and have had to make a solution to a fairly complex question, another uh, low threshold, high ceiling question. But um, we were just finding that teams were a little disoriented in terms of how they should organize their work, even with two of them. With three sections, it just became a little too much, and very few teams were even attempting the hands-on programming questions. We had two two years ago. We reduced it to one last year. This year, we've cut it entirely. We're just sticking with the multiple choice questions, of which there are more now, um, so students can guess if they like and the interactive program, which is now 50% of the overall score. Last year, I believe it was only 20%. I think we did a 40-40-20. Um, this year, it's 50-50 straight up. After having sort of tested it in the field last year, we were quite happy with it. Um, and then uh, increased number of multiple choice questions. As I said, we're looking at 40 multiple choice questions. Um, this way, we I don't expect we'll have many ties um, and I don't expect we'll hardly have any students getting 80 out of 80 on this thing. So we should have a nice clear delineation of um, which teams are the winners. Okay, um, with that said, if you are a beginner to Python, um, here are some places where you can get started. Again, these are all listed on the website. I haven't changed these this year. I'm still happy with all these resources. Um, most of them are free. A couple of them at least have a free trial, but then there's a pay service after that. I wouldn't recommend paying for any services that they offer you. I think you can find everything you need online for free. Um, so you've got Code Academy. That's the one I put at the top of the list for a very good reason. Um, I think that it's just a really good place for somebody who's a complete beginner to take a look. W3 Schools, also really a good one. If you need a reference guide, I, I found it to be an excellent resource. Um, and I've used it in my teaching many times just to say, okay, I forgot how to do this one thing very quickly. Let's go to W3 Schools and, and uh, have a look at that. Um, then you've just sort of got a mix of things that are either reference or are uh, a fun interactive activity for young students to try out and get started. Um, Code Combat is a fun one. I believe that's another subscription one at this point, but um, there should be a free trial so you can at least see if your students are interested in it. Um, online Python, that online-python.com, um, second from the bottom there, that is the Python compiler that um, I got to update this this in my document. Actually, I left a reference to the hands-on programming. We will allow students to use that. We will have that accessible to them during the event in order to help them answer the multiple choice questions or use the interactive program as well as um, as much as they would like to use that. So they will have access to a compiler during the event. Um, they will not be answering anything. I won't be grading anything, scoring anything that goes in there this year. So I need to make a update to that slide. Apologies for that. Um, all right, and then there are plenty of other Python compilers online. Python has is currently, uh, last I checked, has overtaken everything else to be the most popular programming language um, in use in the country. And uh, the, the main reason for that, I think, is that the syntax is very simplistic compared to the other popular programming languages. It's a good beginner language for um, students who aren't sure how interested in coding they are. Um, and it's very easy to read compared to some of the other languages. So um, that's why we go with Python and it being very popular. Students building these skills will certainly help them out here. Um, so uh, general tips outside of the Python specific stuff. What we have um, for ha having run this event for three years already and, and run quite a few tests for my students um, is that what you ought to be coaching your students to do is, is problem solving strategies rather than memorizing code syntax. In this context, it, it, it's pretty much referring to the multiple choice questions. We're talking about how can we recognize what's an easy question versus what's a really hard question. Um, let's not spend too much time, the time management here being a huge key, on one of those hard questions because the questions are all worth one point each. So we don't want to uh, waste a bunch of time on one question trying to get that one point and leaving five or six other questions that they might have been able to get a reasonable answer to um, given a little more time or time they could have spent on the uh, the interactive challenge portion. Um, answer the easier questions first, as I said there. Uh, let students take the ownership there. Ultimately, I've had more than one group, unfortunately, through the past few years come in and be completely overwhelmed. They didn't attend the practice sessions. They didn't really look at anything. They were thrown in the deep end. And I, I really would like to, to not see that. Um, I, 
as a coach, your job is to guide them to how they can practice with these things. It's not to do it all for them, of course. It's not to say, all right, you're going to do this, this, and this. They need to be uh, taking ownership of that. So, so that's my general advice to you as far as these strategies for having them do well on the test day. Obviously, the more experience they get with Python coming into this thing, the better off they're going to be. Um, students who have zero experience whatsoever probably won't do very well because they won't really know what many of the questions are talking about. They can still take reasonable guesses. We've set the problem up in such a way um, that they can still get some points and still feel some confidence, especially in the interactive challenge portion. But um, the more experience they have, the better off it's going to be for them on the actual event. Okay, so um, that's my spiel. Um, the, uh, I'll take some questions here in just a second. Uh, one thing I want to call your attention to here is the second bullet, bullet point on my list. Um, we will be running a Python programming crash course. So for people who are complete beginners to programming or might like to see a little bit more how it's done, um, that is a live event for a couple hours on February 3rd at one o'clock at Macomb Community College South in the K building room 301 as listed here. Um, we will have Adam, references to that. Yes. I believe that time is outdated. Did we okay. not reschedule Ooh. that time um, uh, based on your request? Oh, yeah, that's absolutely correct. I'm sorry. I'm not sure why I... Okay. I so believe we scheduled it for... Did we put it... Uh, I have to go look. Did we put it from 10 to 12? 10 to 12? That makes more sense. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to go look. Yeah, have a quick look. Sorry, we will fix that. I, think I can probably, yeah, there, watch. I can magically change this. It didn't say anything unusual. Don't worry. Yes, right. That, that 10 yeah. to 12 is the correct time. Okay, well, we'll go with that. Sorry, 10 o'clock. I'm going to fix that on my calendar, too. Yeah. What are you talking about? It never said anything strange. <laughs> um, nope. As I said, 10 o'clock in the morning is uh, when this event is. Um, it's, it's a very good one to attend. Um, the uh, Yeah, and, and we did this previously. I think, we, did we take only one hour last time, John, when we did this a few I years so. ago? I yeah, I, I was trying to teach a year's worth of Python in, in one hour. Um, frankly, I think I did a great job, but that was an unreasonable request. So naturally... I now have two hours to teach a year's worth of Python, and we're all, that's that's uh, plenty. <laughs> I will be able to slow few, down my pace a little bit this time. <laughs> We've got a few questions that have appeared yes. in the chat. Yes. Uh, so one says, how, how do you typically split this across two students? Is one doing the interface while the other is doing multiple choice? Um, that's up to you. That's up to them, actually. Um, the... Uh, the successful teams that I've found had two students who were very solid and, and knew their stuff coming in, and they decided that they wanted to split it. They were confident enough that they could say, okay, I know this well enough. I can do the multiple choice. I know this well enough. I can do the interactive challenge. Fine. That works out great. Now we've set it up in such a way that there are two things going on at once, two students. That is a perfectly valid strategy and, and possibly the best one. However, I have found that the interactive challenge as of last year was interesting enough to maybe draw a kid's attention away from the multiple choice portion. So um, that, that will be up to them. I think it'll help a lot to attend the practice sessions because we do have a, a shorter version of the interactive challenge. That's a good beard. Um, and uh, um, it, then they will have some experience with it before they do the actual event. Um, so I think that that is probably the best way to find out what strategy is best for them beforehand. But if you have two kids who are very solid in their uh, Python knowledge for their age coming in, then splitting it up is probably the way to go for time management. But I've also seen groups just tackle them both at the same time together, and that's fine too. There's a question about the workshop on February 3rd that asking if it's intended for both coaches and kids? Uh, primarily coaches, but kids can attend. At the last one we did, we had probably half the groups were just coaches and half the groups were coaches and kids. Um, I'm designing it in such a way that 
there were some uh, some people felt that I was going too fast when we did this three years ago. There's a good reason for that. I had to get through a year's worth of Python content <laughs> in an hour. Um, I'll try and slow it down a bit, and I'll do more to address questions. Um, and so I will try to teach it at a level that kids will at least be able to follow. But it's primarily going to be for coaches. I would recommend to bring the students along so that they can see it and, and so that they can ask you so you can ask me um, during the event itself and we can be a little more responsive. But um, I'm going to say primarily coaches, but yes, also kids. Um, yeah, John. There is a, a question here asking whether you have to register to attend, and I see somebody tried to help us as well on that. Um, there is a registration form. Registration is expected. We will not take attendance at the door, but you help us make sure the facilities are appropriate if you register and tell us who's coming. And there's a link to that on the Code Warriors event page. Do I have to register, John? Uh, you have to be present. <laughs> Uh, so we have another question. It says, yes. do you provide a list of possible questions, sample programming problems? What do we have on the website currently? I feel like we we put some, some uh, what do we put, past, program, past Python questions? We, we um, put up some example practice. questions, as I recall. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've not, we've tried to be, it's, our attempt was to be an example, not exhaustive. Right. So for instance, Especially now that we have 40 questions. Yeah. So it's it's to help people understand how, you know, the, the format of questions, mm -hmm. the level of difficulty of questions. Um, if you want to understand the scope of the possible questions, that's really defined by the rules. And then as far as the interactive programming challenge, that is a, a day of thing. The interface is very simple for students. Um, they're at the practice event. Um, as I said, they will actually get some hands on stuff with that, but we don't make that available ahead of the event, the actual uh, program. That is a day of thing only. I have a question on that, Adam. Is it last year, it was the first time we'd seen that interface. Is it mm -hmm. going to be a, uh, a new um, uh, interactive program this year, or will we've it be made an a couple of We've made a couple of tweaks to it um, after sort of troubleshooting it in the field, but uh, overall it's the same thing. Okay. So if we have returning students from last year, they'll say, oh, I've seen this before. We may have changed a couple of numerical values around um, just to address that, but uh, otherwise, yes, they will have seen it before and they will know sort of how to answer the questions, but I'd be surprised if they immediately knew the answers. <laughs> And they will be seeing uh, an entirely question. new set of multiple choice questions. There's a, there's a question here on when when are the practice events? Um, I'm not going to list them all off the top of my head, but there are four, uh, and they are posted on our website. And if uh, you're asking your head coach is another good way to get the answer to that, or you could send me a send me a, a an email offline, and I'll answer your question. That it depends on what what school you attend. Uh, all right, we have another question for you, Adam. Is the interactive programming a tool we have access to ahead of the competition? Yeah, that's a no. I just, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I answered that after you posted the question. Okay, sorry. Uh, Shanice is asking, are arrays essentially studying list? I, the English is off a little bit here. The scope says arrays, but doesn't have lists anywhere while all the help guys mostly mentioned lists. Does that make sense, sense to you, Adam? Arrays. arrays and lists are very close. Um, I'm looking right now, there's a W3Schools entry about Python arrays. So uh, I'm, I'm sharing my screen so I can, I can just show you this really quickly. Um, if you go to this page, you can talk about uh, Python arrays. It says Python doesn't have built-in support for arrays, but you can use Python lists instead. I think um, here's, here's how we would set up an array in Python. Um, so, yeah, the list is essentially treated the same as the array. The syntax is the same. So, um, yeah, arrays, lists in Python are, mm, this is arrays. So does it depend on the resource that people are going to go to, whether it's discussed in this way? 
whether I think and... I think for our purposes, uh, from a programming perspective, in Python, um, when we talk about arrays in the test in the in the um, the documents, you can consider that to be essentially studying lists. Yes. We Since might Python want to appears to treat them essentially the same way. Yeah, we can make it say list instead future. of arrays. That might work out better. Can You'll have to forgive I, me, uh, Shanice. My, <laughs> um, my, my primary programming experience is in C Sharp, um, and that has both arrays and lists as separate things. I've studied Python a fair bit and uh, obviously had to do quite a bit of it for creating this test, but you might see a couple of um, uh, sort of vestigial terms that I use. So sorry about that. Uh, we do have a hand raised. I think I saw that it was Paul. Yes, hello. Yes, hello. Um, hi, Paul. Hi. I, I, uh, so related to that last question, there's an mm -hmm. echo. I'm not, I, hope it, I don't think it's me, but um, are the multiple choice questions about programming in general or about Python specifically? They will be Python specific. Um, some of the questions will be general uh, programming in terms of what sort of variable um, would you store this kind of thing, that kind of question that would apply to multiple languages. But Python is the specific language that we're using for everything. Every line of code that they see will be a Python line of code. Okay, so, so when there is a difference between languages, we're, we're talking about Python. Python, yes. Emily, you can ask your question. Well, I'm actually Jonathan, uh, ah. the, the sub coach here. Um, <laughs> question. So you mentioned earlier that you built a program with your students. Um, will this program be used during the test, like as a hands on portion to the test? I was just a little bit confused by that. Um, it is 50% of the test of the event. So we have the multiple choice portion, which is a written test with a, a zip form, a zip grade form. Um, there will be 40 questions on that is what we're at right now. And um, then there is a program that they will access on the computer in the lab that we have the password for so they can't access it beforehand. Um, and in that, they will be, it will be scoring them from what they do there. They can go through, um, I can tell you the interface for the program is uh, there are multiple questions in there that they can click on in a menu that my student helpfully uh, coded up with me. Um, and it'll take them to that question. And then they can leave that question wherever they want and go back to the menu. Um, and uh, I believe they can take multiple tries at a question in that too, but it'll cost them time. Um, so that's something to be aware of there. So the, the, that is completely separate from the multiple choice portion. It's still about Python, but um, it, those questions are not the same as the one on the test. We have a couple of questions in the chat. One asks about which of the links in your list of resources would you consider to be the best introduction so as to not overwhelm students who have not done this before? Where, where would you ask, suggest that someone who's a newbie, where should they start? Probably Code Academy. Um, I, the last I checked it, and I didn't, I haven't checked it in, in the lead up to this, but, but traditionally that's been the place for, um, complete beginners to any topic. Um, so I'd probably start there. Um, otherwise, if you want to go looking for other resources with a Google search, I'd be looking something like Python for complete beginners is, is probably the way I'd go with that. Uh, but I would, I would encourage you to look at all the resources and say, okay, which of these looks most comprehensible to your student in particular, because every kid is different. Uh, I'm going to skip Matt's question for just a moment here uh, and and come back to it. Um, Sorry, Matt. We've got it from Sean. Do you have a recommendation for a resource that we can use to prepare the students for the interactive portion? Hmm. So a lot of um, coding is about lateral thinking, problem solving skills. This is what I teach my students in the, um, in my class. I've got, I think, I think uh, we've got a stray microphone. I'm getting a bit of an echo. Thank you. Um, a lot of, a lot of this is about problem solving skills. 
So in terms of preparation, um, I think it's just about developing problem solving skills because the idea of this is to solve something they haven't seen before. No, uh, these aren't terribly complicated. There's not going to be anything where, where I think a kid is like, I have no idea what to even try. Um, but again, low floor, high ceiling, low threshold, high ceiling. So um, students will be able to get some of the points and build confidence there. They probably won't be able to get all of the points. Um, and that is just the way we like it. So um, I will say that there is an excellent game. If you have students who happen to like uh, video games, the uh, the title of this game, it is, it is a, a paid game. I think it's available online for something like $15 or something. Um, it is the single best lateral thinking trainer I've ever seen. And I think your kids will probably love it. The title of the game, and I'll type it into the chat here, is Baba Is You. I teach uh, programming and game design. And this is the single best as I said, single best lateral thinking trainer I've ever seen. It's a, it's a cute little animated thing, totally appropriate for kids of, of all ages. Um, and it is, you, you push these word blocks around and actually change the rules of the game as the thing uh, changes. So if they spent half an hour with something like that, I imagine they would already be much better problem solvers than when they started. And I think that's true for anybody. I think it's true for us adults, honestly. I, I think it's a wonderfully made game. And, and uh, the best um, lateral thinking trainer, I think, uh, as far as so, preparing. Adam, I'll ask you to send me uh, information on that. And we'll publish sure. a formal FAQ question on, uh, that goes with this question with, with, a link, with a link to it. Sure. Um, there's another question here about the zip grade form. And I appreciate somebody mentioning this because the, the one that's listed online only has 20 questions on it, and it no longer matches uh, the 40 question format that we're mm -hmm. going to do. So we will get that updated. Uh, students will be given zip grade forms at the event that have 40, 40 uh, questions on there. And we will get that updated. Uh, I can't load the links to the practices you mentioned. Uh, so th th we're talking about practice tournaments, and it's either Chippewa Valley or it's Lons Cruz or it's Utica practice event or at South Macomb. And those are in the main elementary menu on our website. So that's what's, that's what you're looking for for those practice tournaments. Okay, uh, I skipped a question because I'm not sure we're going to do this today, Adam, but we've got a student or a, uh, a coach who's asking whether you can walk us through question number eight from the example questions on the website. Um, do we want to take Karthik's question first? Uh, he's, he's had a hand up and oh, he's I got can a microphone see that. Sure, yes. <laughs> yeah, hi. Uh, you know, like, uh, as part of the interactive challenges, you know, uh, will you be using any specific uh, ID that, that, I mean, that you can recommend uh, for us now? Did you say ID? The, the ID, the integrated development environment uh, for the Python. There are, there are multiple IDs, right? Like No, um, this is, it. they won't, they, uh, at most they will be typing one line of code and it will be into a custom uh, program that, that we have made. So there's no, I mean, they can use online Python as the compiler because that's the one we'll have available to them as the resource if they want to. But a lot of the things in the interactive challenge are click and drag. A lot of them are click the right buttons. A lot of them are fill in the blank. So they, they won't be using a compiler in the traditional sense for the interactive challenge. Got it is a game, essentially. Uh, we have something written in the chat which says custom IDE integrated development environment. I, yeah, Dan I was clarifying for me. Okay, so, sorry. All right, we got a hand raised. Um, uh, a, Emily with the deep voice. Yeah, yeah once again. Um, are ah. these tests going to be taken on computers or on tablets? We have computers in the labs. The computers, okay. Um, but when you say that, and, and we'll have the um, the website where the interactive challenge is set up for them when they come in. Okay. okay. We're at the practice tournaments. We're typically depending upon hardware that's been provided by the specific school district, and in in the past, those have most often been laptops. 
I believe the computers that we had access to at the college, Adam, were actually were, desktop computers. Mm -hmm. Yep. No okay. tablets yet, though. Which is good, because I'm not 100% certain the, uh, it, it would probably still work on a tablet, but it's not optimized for that. So hopefully we don't have to use tablets. All right, so the one question we haven't tried was this question number eight for what's posted on online. Um, if, you, if you have time to do that, Adam, and give feedback on that, that's great. Sure. Um, so this is, is this the right one here? Is that what we're looking at? Let's see who asked the question. question asker. <laughs> trying to find it again. Does it have a typo? Uh, this was Matt Bailey. So Matt, is this the question that Adam's showing on the screen, the one that you were asking specifically about? Okay. Um, so look, this question is about function definitions. Um, we have this defined function called say hi if you know about python if you don't this is all nonsense to you um and uh so define function called say hi with an argument called name and all it does is it prints hi and then it concatenates that with name as the uh and it'll it'll print this and um what we want to do is how to call this function so this is about uh calling a function that is defined um so what you tell your students here is, well, they have to call the name of the function, which is say hi. We've got that. And then we need to pass them. We have someone called Linda. And yeah, you're right. That is a typo. This should say Emily, not Linda. I don't know why it says Linda. I, I don't think I wrote these questions, did I? I don't think I wrote these questions. I think these are old ones. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I did write these questions three years ago. So yeah, John, uh, this, should say, this should say Emily, not Linda. <laughs> Who's Linda? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. You're absolutely right. But um, if I don't know if that was the nature of, of the question, if it's like, is that a typo or what does it mean? In terms of what it means, I mean, Sean's absolutely correct. There was a typo. There's nobody called Linda. I don't know who Linda is. There's Emily, who um, is probably the one with a very deep voice. And uh, the correct way to call this is the, um, yeah, it's the total, total error there. Um, All right, so we'll get, uh, we'll yeah, get that say resource updated and, and uh, corrected for the website. So, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, and so as far as a function call, yeah, you want to pass it a string. Strings are pretty heavily featured on this test. You want to make sure your students have a good understanding of them. When they're creating a literal string here, we know it needs to go in quotes like so. So um, that's so, the, so. the idea here. So and sorry, it said, it in, that said Emily, that's not correct. Matt's comment in the chat uh, indicates that the, the, yeah. the, the Linda question was why he was raising it. So. Yes. Ah, yes, the Linda question. I have a Linda question too. I don't know where that came from. Okay, are there other questions for Adam? If not, we do have the FAQ online, uh, which is a great resource for you to uh, submit questions if you come up with something later. And add, you know, they, they're not coaching questions, they're rules clarification questions. But uh, sometimes there's a gray boundary between those two. So um, ask your question and uh, we'll do our best to answer it. Thank okay. you all for attending. And uh, I hope to see many of you at the live event on February 3rd. John, did we conclude definitely 10 o'clock in the morning? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock, as I, as I said always from the beginning, at MCC South, K Building, room 301. Yeah, so the location is is not a location we've used for workshops in recent, but it is the same general location that we will have our main tournament at. So it's it's at the Macomb Community College South Campus, not Central Campus, up on Hall Road. Down in Warren is where that workshop is. It's especially tricky because they both have a K building. Yeah, I, I trust you on that. So. Hmm. Okay. okay. Thank you, Adam. Yes, thank you all. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You too.